Hi, I'm your host, Robert Jackson, and this is the next episode of How to Survive Being a College Student, Work Life Edition. people understand that they need to get jobs while they're in college. Whether this job is to help supplement your life and allow extra amenities outside of the minimum survival, or maybe perhaps this job will pay for college itself, a lot of us end up in this impasse. Too many times, however, it isn't the problem in finding a job, but rather balancing that job with school. Chances are that you're in a college town, and they're used to their workforce ebbing and flowing with the nearby school schedule. There can be a real downfall when you aren't able to have as much time of the day to work on school and be able to fit a work schedule around that. This video is here to help you find that balance and have you coming out the better for it. First, there needs to be a clear distinction on priorities in your life right now. When you have a clear priority set, it will help you make decisions when you come to an impasse. If you're watching this video, chances are that you're trying to prioritize school over work so that further education can help you in the long game and improve your work situation down the road. But there are also chances that you're watching this because you're coming back to school, or maybe you're trying to get certified and you've never felt confident in a classroom. And you're doing this while working a nine to five job or a job that requires them to come first. If you're going to school, you're choosing to do it now. You know that the priority should come first. There are ways to work around a full schedule and there are things to watch for and there are things to help you sustain this in the long run. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the effect that working and going to school can have on a person. This, of course, is called the burnout effect. You look ghastly, Robert. I haven't been sleeping. We all know the symptoms, the fatigue, the inability to find motivation, the stagnation of looking at a screen without actually doing anything, or maybe perhaps something drastic like a real breakdown. <laughs> Oh my god, I need help. <laughs> the first thing that is important is to not deny the effect, but instead, not let the fatigue sneak up on you. It's wrong to say that you can avoid it. I haven't seen anyone who has, but there are ways to lessen the blow, ways to let it work around your schedule, and ways to recover that are both manageable and healthy. One of the ways to help lessen the blow is to create a schedule for your homework or school activities that are up to you to get done in your own time. Most classes are not five days a week, and having a planned rubric ahead of time will help homework become a manageable schedule. What this amounts to is the ability to finish homework for the day without having to finish the assigned work. I don't do my best work when I've been staring at a blank screen for six hours with nothing to show for it. Don't force yourself to sit there. That also means that you need to be ahead of your assigned dates for your homework. Rather than playing catch up every day of the week, you can break things apart. And if you need to manage them into bites rather than one swallow, the end result will look much better. For me, what this looks like a lot of times is having a schedule for a day and really helping myself plan for a long day of work. If you work from, let's say, 7.30 in the morning until four, you should tell yourself that you're going to work on school from six to eight or six to 7.30. Give yourself a deadline of the day without the pressure of finishing everything before you're done for the day. It gives your brain an allowance to turn off and on instead of just trying to always be on. It's important to note that you should try and not jump from one event to the next. In the example I gave above with the hours, there are two hours differences between off of work and starting work again with school. It gives you a chance to unwind. Watch an episode of Netflix, take a breather, Make yourself a meal where you're not trying to also do too many things at once. It's important to schedule sleep in here too. Shifts come in all shapes and sizes, so it would be wrong of me to say to get to bed early, but that doesn't mean you should sacrifice your sleep. If you work until two in the morning, don't start your day too early the next. You need to work around a schedule rather than force a square peg into a round hole. With that being said about shifts, there is a definite concern I've had 
when it comes to prioritizing work over school for a lot of reasons. If you're in college, surrounded by working college students, your bosses might have a hard time finding a reliable source of labor they can count on. For some of us, that can also lead to a savior effect. To not let the business or our coworkers down. This can be especially hard for those who are choosing to go back to school when we are already working established jobs, and those jobs have been allowed our full attention up to this point. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. What is important to remember is that you have chosen to go back to school for a purpose. It's not whimsy, it isn't free, and everybody respects that. Don't lose sight of it, and they will respect that. You want this life as choices are necessary. Sometimes it might be hard for them to see it at that time, but the understanding will be there for you to put your priorities where they need to be in the future. Don't take that extra shift if you're going to regret it later. Don't take work home with you because you're already doing that with school. Work is allowed to tire you, take your hours, but then you get to clock out and go home. Creating division between those worlds will allow you to stay on top of school, but will also allow you to recognize that you're burning the candle at both ends. And you need to take some rest to rejuvenate yourself. As we've discussed earlier, having a set schedule for your schoolwork, as well as the classes themselves, will help find the time to do them, rather than wasting time trying to do them when you're just sitting there. These and other methods might sound like they condense the time that you have to work, but if you're worried you're not going to have enough time to totally use this, you should remember Parkinson's Law that tells us that work is expanded to fill the time we have. Those who are great at time management and who give themselves less time to do tasks are on purpose have a giddy-up effect for themselves. It lets them be more efficient in their production. What I'm getting at is don't block out days if you, if you don't have to for your schoolwork. Make them short and effective. You will notice the difference when you do. This week, we focused on the aspects of working while adding school on top of all of that, or the other way around. The main things you want to focus on is the schedule you set for yourself. We talked about the avoiding the burnout effect and how, to self and how self care will help you in the long run, even if you feel guilty about rejuvenating now. We also talked about how setting that schedule without apologies, as you are here to get the stuff done, this helped us cover the idea of efficiency, and there will be other coverages on this later on in the future. The way that you give yourself time helps you be more efficient with that time later. Tune in next week for Living Off Campus, The Pitfalls, and What to Be Aware of.